What are some of the most profitable income streams you could be making right now online that will yield you anywhere from $300,000 a year to a million to a jillion billion, right? So you may have heard it could be e-commerce, it could be affiliate marketing, it could be day trading, it could be investing in trading uh, Bitcoin, it could be freelancing. Well, the truth is, it's really all of the above. It's really just pick one of those things, go hard, and you will be filthy rich. I'm gonna give some examples today of some really rich people and how they're making a ton of money leveraging these income streams and these websites. So some of these income streams I have myself, others I definitely do not. Like this first one, it may surprise you like crazy. And this first income stream and website is Spotify. Yes, I am talking about the Spotify app that is you know, well known as a music application that is taking over. Perfect example is they recently made a hundred million dollar deal with Joe Rogan. Hello everybody, I have an announcement. The podcast is moving to Spotify. Now, I'm talking about the Joe Rogan, the podcaster, super famous, the Joe Rogan that gets paid anywhere from $50,000 to $150,000 per podcast episode that is that he produces. So here's what happened with Spotify. Spotify was like, hey, Joe Rogan, why don't you come over to us? We're gonna buy your podcast and pay you to leave YouTube to leave Google, to leave iTunes, right? So all of those platforms are now losing by not having Joe Rogan on the platform, right? And Joe was like, okay, cool. You know, 100 mil, great. And you might be thinking to yourself, like how on earth does Spotify just buy these podcasts? Well, Spotify is actually moving towards a trend where they want to host more shows, more videos. They are now offering video like YouTube does starting in January when Joe Rogan's podcast officially switches just specifically to host Joe Rogan's podcast, but now to offer that feature where you could be watching videos on Spotify. So what does this mean for you as a creator? Spotify is huge and it's welcoming new podcasts like crazy. It's a new space and a new platform for podcasters, right? And just to think about how much money was made by Spotify um, from getting Joe Rogan, because you might be thinking, man, like uh, Spotify has been acquiring more podcasts even before Joe Rogan, like in 2019, they bought a bunch of podcasts, I can't remember the names, but it was for millions of dollars, right? So let's just look at Joe Rogan's example with the stock market. So stock, uh, of Spotify before the deal was $161 and stock after they signed the deal with Joe Rogan went up to $189, right? So just in two short days after signing Joe Rogan, they went from being a $30 billion company to a $35 billion company. So. Spotify wins, ding, ding, ding. Like everyone's thinking like, how could they recuperate that money, that investment that they made? Well, uh, it only took 48 hours within the stock market. They became uh, $5 billion richer. Good move, Spotify. Everybody wins in that trade. So this Spotify deal with Joe Rogan, I think back and I'm like, okay, $100 million, we're in 2020. I bet that there will be a content creator out there that will have a billion dollar contract within the next, I don't know, five to seven years. And the reason why I say that is because Spotify, for example, is trying to become the number one company for audio, right? They are trying to take over and they are on a very, very good start. So the point is Spotify has some shows now, but they need a whole lot more, right? They need podcasts. They need you to develop this income stream for yourself, grow a podcast, get paid from podcasting, um, and get on Spotify. I mean, it is a brand new space for you know YouTubers and podcasts that are being hosted on YouTube to transfer over to Spotify. The field is wide open. So I recently did a collaboration with another YouTuber talking about how to make money on podcasts if you're just like, I don't even know where to get started. So let's check out that clip right now. There are definitely lots of different ways that you can generate an income online with podcasting. So the one that people are most familiar with is, of course, the sponsored messages in 
pretty much every podcast you listen to, right? People will like take a break, they'll like give an ad read for some kind of brand that is paying them to do that. So that is something that's generally more accessible to people with a larger audience. So even for myself with my podcast, I don't have sponsored messages in my podcast yet, but I can still make money from it. So someday when you grow your podcast to a certain number of listeners, definitely getting sponsored messages in there is a great way to generate income from it. But before you get to that stage, there are still other opportunities. So what I do personally is instead of doing an ad read for a brand that has like paid me explicitly to talk about them, what I do instead is I shout out one of the affiliate marketing programs that I'm signed up for. So there's all kinds of different softwares and products that I really love and wanna share with my audience. So rather than like doing a regular brand message, what I'll do is basically kind of do that similar ad read sort of style, but just talk about a product or service that I have an affiliate link for. And then at the end, rather than sending them to the link that the company gave me, I'll just say, here's my affiliate link. It's in the show notes, go check it out. So with that, I can make sure that the listeners that I have on my podcast episodes are hearing about the products and services that I love and then potentially purchasing them with my affiliate link. So it's a really good opportunity to put in that affiliate marketing piece because people are pretty much used to hearing ads on podcasts anyways. So when you jump in with an ad read, but you're just talking about an affiliate, then it works pretty seamlessly. People are used to it and they expect it. So if you aren't at the point where your audience is big enough, to actually get like brand deals for your podcast, that is a really great way to start generating some income with your podcast. And in addition to that, if you are offering your own like digital products or services or whatever, definitely make sure you're promoting your own business too. So shout out your affiliates, shout out your own services, and that can be a really great way to generate some income. Wow, that's really great. So I wanna follow up on that, but I'm dying to know, what are some top two to three tips for getting started with a podcast? What is a beginner need slash need to know? That's a great question because I think a lot of people are pretty intimidated by podcasting because it feels pretty mysterious. Like every other platform, it's very clear. If you want to be a YouTuber, sign up for YouTube and start posting there. Instagram, it's the same. But with podcasting, basically what you need to know is you're going to need some way to record your audio. If you want, that can literally be your smartphone. You don't need a fancy microphone. You need some way to edit it. So you can use like a free program like Audacity that's available for download on PC or Mac. So you can edit the audio that you record on your phone or on your laptop in Audacity on your laptop, or you can use a free app like Anchor to record and edit your podcast. So those are some really great beginner options. And then beyond that, you're gonna need a way to post it to Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So I mentioned Anchor. That's a really great app that can kind of help you do all of this. So you can record, edit, and host your podcast there and get it submitted to Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But if you don't want to use Anchor, you can still record it on your phone, edit it in Audacity. You can host it somewhere like Simplecast or on your existing website. And then you could submit your RSS feed to Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So that's the general process. And it might sound scary, but trust me, it's not. And you only have to do that once, the submission of the RSS feed piece. And then from there, you're just recording and editing your podcast. All right, so the next income stream slash website we're talking about that could make you filthy rich and somebody that is gonna be filthy rich is Kelly Stamps. And we're talking about the Kelly Stamps on YouTube. Yes, that's right, the creator that some say is quirky, like weird, like strange, but funny, hilarious. That Kelly Stamps, the one that's been blowing up this year on YouTube. Um, I'm a personal huge fan. I think she's amazing. She dances, she sings, um, she randomly does performances in the park. She loves trying out tiramisu. It's just phenomenal to, to have seen her journey and super entertaining to always watch her new videos when they come out. She only edits on iMovie. She does nothing extravagant, but she's killing it. Why? People love her. She's unique. She's a very, very unique creator that people are loving and growing a huge attachment to, including myself. So it's like every time there's a new Kelly Stamps video, it's like click, click, click. Um, But it's great. I mean, she's breaking like all the rules of YouTube that I typically teach, like, you know, the, the, the nice big thumbnails with huge copy. It's like with her thumbnails, you could barely read the, the copy on her thumbnails and like, 
you know, it's just she has no special effects in animations. It's just her being funny and raw on camera. So a creator like Kelly Stamps is making a lot of money with brand deals and sponsorships and she's blowing up. I mean, like over 50,000 subscribers a month blowing up. And so as Kelly says in this clip, this is how she's generating some cash. Being a YouTuber is like being a freelancer. So I have to do my own light accounting in a way. I keep track of everything that enters my account and exits my account. I uh, get an untaxed amount from ad revenue, an untaxed amount from sponsors, and an untaxed amount in commissions, and there's like other forms of income. I, I lost track. And so Kelly is killing it as, you know, as she mentioned, she's like a freelancer on YouTube. She can get sponsored by anybody. Um, I haven't seen her come out with any of her own products yet to sell, but I'm sure that's definitely in the making, um, like a membership, a course, or something like that. But also, she's killing it as well with YouTube ad revenue. In this clip, she explains how much she wants to make. My YouTube goal for ad revenue, meaning what I want to be paid next month on the 21st, September 21st, I want to earn at least $14,000 in ad revenue. So she mentions 14,000 and I know for a fact in one of her other Q&A videos that she was making at least 10 grand a month from um, YouTube ad revenue, which is phenomenal to go on top of all the other ad revenue streams that she's making. And here's the thing, I, me as a YouTube creator, could request for a company that, you know, Kelly Stamps does business with. I could say, hey, pay me $5,000 to make this video about your blah, blah, blah product where they'll be like, um, no. <laughs> but then Kelly Stamps is like, I need minimum six grand. They're like, Ch -ch -ch check, where do I sign? Here you go. Um, that's just cause her reach is so, so viral right now. I mean, minimum, her new videos are getting easily 100,000 views within the first couple of days. So it's really powerful to see, but the point is YouTube, get on it. And if you're really wondering where to start, how to monetize a YouTube channel like that, go ahead and download my own subscribers to sales blueprint, which goes over everything you need to know about, you know, the six steps of monetizing a channel and building up a channel that sells. All right, so coming in at the next income stream that we are talking about, and that is an online store slash using Etsy or another third party platform where you can host an online store and sell products. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I personally have uh, experience with e-commerce. It was the drop shipping model using Shopify where you build up a Shopify store and then you drop ship products from overseas. I did that and I did a little bit of print on demand where you upload a design and then depending on the print on demand company, it goes on like cups, uh, shower curtains, pillows, shoes, hoodies, t-shirts, all kinds of things. So you upload the design and when somebody orders it, the print on demand company, they uh, basically fulfill the order and they ship it. And you're not involved in that process. So it's really, really nice. But the point is my friend Hannah, who's one of my YouTube students, but she's crushing it on Etsy. Like she's a leader in the industry right now with her Etsy store. So if you look, take a look at this clip of how much she says she's making. I have my website that I generate sales through. I also sell on a third party platform called Etsy. I'm sure you've heard of it. And I also sell wholesale as well. So those are the three different ways that I'm actually processing transactions on when I first started out, obviously I didn't just opening and listing a few products to all of a sudden I'm doing three to five thousand dollars a day. So yeah, it's pretty impressive to be making um, three to five grand a day in revenue. As she said, that's um, that's gross. That's not uh, her net profit, but. I mean, that's well over six figures in revenue she's producing every single month. She's got every single step of her, you know, manufacturing, of her fulfillment, her customer service, like down to a T. And it's really inspiring because she's not drop shipping cheap products from overseas, right? I mean, these products are, you know, handmade in the state that she lives in, in Florida. And so it's really, really impressive what you can do um, building an Etsy store. Because here's the thing with Etsy versus Shopify. Shopify, there's no traffic, right? But with Etsy or a third party platform, there is traffic, there's warm traffic. Warm traffic meaning that there's customers looking on Etsy to buy something 
there. Like there's a search engine, like they could look up, um, you know, cute shirts, cute tank tops, whatever they want to look up on Etsy. And so I suggest if you're just starting out with e-commerce and want to start, I would start any third party platform like Etsy because there's already millions of people on there. There's traffic on there already and you don't have to pay just to get cold traffic um, using Facebook ads, which are very expensive to get up and running and started with your store. All right, so the next income stream slash website slash strategy we are talking about is with Kartra. Kartra is a website and we're talking about sales funnels and using or slash building sales funnels for your business, right? For your online business, for your brand. And the reason why nowadays businesses don't really work, you know, or get super profitable is because they're not utilizing sales funnels. And if you're kind of new to this space and have been thinking like, what is a sales funnel? Like that's perfectly normal. I used to think that in the beginning so much. It was so confusing to me what a sales funnel was, but basically sales funnels are kind of like the online version of a McDonald's drive through right? You have the billboard on the freeway where people see the McDonald's like, oh, exit in a mile, right? That's like the top of the funnel. So that's, you know, relating it to social media, that's our YouTube, that's our Instagram, Facebook, where people are seeing our brand for the first time, right? And then when you exit the freeway and then you go to the drive through that's the next step in the funnel. Then what do you do next? You order a burger. And then they're like, okay, well, do you want fries and a drink with that? That's an upsell, right? Because McDonald's doesn't profit from their hamburgers. They, you know, they make money off the upsells or the burgers and all the additional add-ons. So the point is a sales funnel is a way to take your audience through an official buying process. So when you capture somebody's name and email on a landing page, that is the top of your funnel and that is where they enter your email list. And it's super important for them to become a part of your email list because then now your email list is your list. You own that list. It's yours to own, you know, forever, I guess. And so that is your hottest source of traffic because later you'll discover that when you email your list and offer and want to sell to them, they buy. As long as you keep delivering good value to your email subscribers, then for sure eventually they will buy. And so the reason why I talked about Kartra in the beginning of this section is because Kartra is my business tool of choice to do my sales funnels, to do my email marketing, um, to do everything that allows me to make money online. If I did not have Kartra, I would not be able to make money online, period because it also hosts my membership sites, my digital course, um, my you know elements of my website. So I highly recommend if you're looking to save money from the beginning to get Kartra because it'll save you money. You don't have to go get ClickFunnels and then go get a $300 membership with Kajabi and then go get active campaign and integrate it all together. No, all of those things, all of those features are already in Kartra um, to begin with. And so that's why I love it. So next on deck, we have membership sites. Yes, membership sites are a way to make money, a way to make a lot of money and to be rich. Just with one membership site, you can do it. There's several examples of super rich people out there that have membership sites that are making millions for them. Um, one example is Brendan Bruchard. He has a membership site. Well, you can check out his page, but basically he offers uh, virtual group coaching and he can host thousands and thousands of people in this membership because it is virtual and because it is in a group format. And um, the reason why it works is because think of the Netflix model, the membership that you're paying for is so cheap that people forget about it, right? I mean, no one's going to trip over seven to ten dollars a month on a subscription now i know his membership is more expensive than that but the point is there's a high retention rate because there's a high value that he's providing within this membership so there's a ton of things that you can provide within a membership like every single month you can host coaching calls you can have giveaways you can have exclusive merchandise you can send your members gifts in the mail. There's so many cool options you can have with a subscription-based membership model. Um, and the other popular one, and this guy, everybody knows him, he's filthy rich. He has a total social media reach of 66 
million people, and that is Logan Paul. Everyone knows Logan Paul, but they don't know that he has a membership called Maverick Club. And in Maverick Club, you get all these exclusive deals, exclusive behind the scene content that he has. You get to be entered into different giveaways and blah, 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 the list goes on and on. Um, and I think that's like $20 a month, his Maverick Club. I mean, if his reach, are you know if his reach is 66 million people just think about how much money he could be making from just his maverick club that's probably his number one source of income if i had to guess okay so um, membership sites are very powerful they are a recurring source of income and it's not a super high risk as far as like building a high ticket product or a high ticket course where it takes a lot of upfront effort to produce the course and then um, sell it for a higher price. This is something that you can test easily and if it doesn't work, that's okay. You can tweak it and find a model that works for your audience the best. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're still here with me, congratulations. Let's keep the party going. Let's have some more fun. Why don't you join me in watching my next video that is coming up right now, just click right here, which is about the five websites you can be using to help you turn $0 to $200 every single day in passive income. And that video starts right now. Just go ahead and click. We're gonna be going over five websites where you can turn $0 into $100, $200 per day in passive income and earn money while you sleep. Because isn't that the new American dream? Traveling the world when there's no COVID-19 pandemic